Chief Executive Carrie Lam has said the bill is dead. What's the take on this? Well, obviously, I, I, I'm not happy with it because uh, Hong Kong has uh, uh, obligations not only to the rest of China, but also to the rest of the world. Uh, and there are now 177 jurisdictions altogether with which Hong Kong has no extradition arrangements. And what that means in practical terms is that uh, uh, criminals from all over the world uh, can come to Hong Kong and claim safe haven. They can't be sent back to face trial. Uh, and we've recently learned, for example, that there are over 300 mainland fugitives uh, who've claimed safe haven here in Hong Kong. There are, of course, convicted criminals from Macau who've been convicted of money laundering and bribery. They've come to Hong Kong. We know of at least one case of an alleged murderer from Taiwan uh, who's uh, come to Hong Kong. And none of these people could be sent back to face trial uh, in the jurisdictions from whence they came. Uh, of course, we don't know how many other uh, criminal fugitives there are from other parts of the world, also claiming safe haven here in Hong Kong, but we can be sure that there are some. Uh, so this is a most unfortunate situation. After all, the return of fugitives uh, is an integral part of international efforts to combat all types of crime. Uh, and I'm afraid the result of what's happened, uh, Hong Kong has fallen down on its responsibilities, which is a great pity in my view. Why do you feel so many people took to the streets? Do Hong Kong people really understand the bill? Well, I think that uh, a lot of people uh, didn't really understand what the, the issues were. I think that uh, a, a highly orchestrated scare campaign had been mounted, uh, both within Hong Kong uh, and, uh, and uh, internationally, uh, against, the, against what was proposed. Um, as I say, the, the fact that so many other countries, including European Union countries, uh, had uh, signed extradition treaties uh, with mainland China was excluded. People simply, simply didn't realize that. But over and above that, I think that there was uh, uh, a general dissatisfaction with some areas of government policy. Uh, people were unhappy with the housing situation. People were unhappy with li livelihood issues. So there were all sorts of factors uh, feeding into this. Uh, uh, but, and it's a great pity that uh, all those factors came together to, uh, to uh, stifle what was a very important uh, initiative uh, in terms of criminal justice. It seems the opponents do not accept Caroline's statement that the bail is dead. What's your take on the protesters' demands now? Well, obviously, they're making all sorts of demands. Uh, and uh, as one concession is made, so more demands uh, are made. Uh, clearly, they want to humiliate the government as, as much as possible. Uh, clearly, they want to impose uh, impossible demands on, on Carrie Lam, presumably with an attempt to force her into an impossible situation whereby she, she has to resign uh, and to cause as much confrontation as possible. Uh, but the, the, the demand that gives me the greatest concern uh, concerns the prosecution of the criminal suspects. Very grave offences have been committed, including riot, including criminal damage, including uh, wounding of police officers, uh, and those responsible must clearly be held to account. Uh, yet the apologists for the people who did that uh, are now calling for what they call an amnesty, by which I suppose they mean that the Secretary for Justice, Theresa Chen yuk uh, should not uh, prosecute them, uh, even if there is enough evidence. That, of course, is a direct challenge to the rule of law. Uh, it would subvert our prosecution process were it allowed to happen. Uh, and it's absolutely vital that the, uh, the Department of Justice uh, does not uh, surrender to uh, political pressure of that type, uh, but holds its ground uh, and applies its usual prosecution policy uh, in deciding uh, whether or not to prosecute. Uh, and in making that decision, I'm sure that the Department of Justice will make clear that uh, political violence has no role to play uh, in Hong Kong's way of life and that those who indulge in it, indulge in it uh, must expect to face their just desserts. As a barrister, law professor, and director of public prosecutions for over 12 years, do you think that Hong Kong needs such a fugitive bill? Well, uh, obviously Hong Kong does, because there are fugitives from all over China, uh, and indeed, undoubtedly, from other parts of the world, uh, now claiming safe haven here in Hong Kong. Uh, the international responsibility of Hong Kong, uh, as indeed of any other jurisdiction, uh, is to enable other places to combat crime. Uh, and one of the key means of doing this is by returning fugitive offenders so they can stand trial uh, in the places where their crimes uh, allegedly occurred. Uh, and unless Hong Kong uh, honors its obligations in this regard, it will have repercussions on Hong Kong. Uh, let me give you for example, an example. Uh, since 1997, it's been estimated that uh, the mainland has returned 260 uh, fugitives uh, to Hong Kong for trial, whereas Hong Kong hasn't returned uh, <laughs> anybody uh, to, to the mainland. So in the absence of reciprocity on the part of Hong Kong, we can't expect that cooperation of this type will continue forever. Uh, and this applies to other jurisdictions as well. 
Uh, so Hong Kong does have clear obligations to help other jurisdictions to combat crime, uh, and it must live up to those obligations. Uh, and the, uh, the uh, extradition bill, uh, which was only a stopgap measure until full uh, extradition agreements had been arranged, uh, the uh, extradition bill was uh, an attempt to uh, uh, enable criminal justice to be done uh, in cases where uh, fugitives were claiming safe haven here in Hong Kong uh, and evading their just deserts in that way. So it was absolutely essential, yes. I heard there are 37 kinds of serious crimes that would be included, even if it was passed. As a criminal justice analyst, tell us what's people's concern. Well, I mean, the, the, all the more serious offences would be there. Uh, murder, wounding cases, uh, cases of serious uh, fraud, uh, theft, those bribery, corruption, all, money laundering, all those types of offences would, would be included. Uh, and of course, there was an additional protection that uh, the offence would have to be punishable with only with a, 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 at least seven years imprisonment before someone uh, could be returned to another jurisdiction. Whereas in the 20 extradition treaties which Hong Kong currently has with other, with other places, it's only one year. So this was an additional tier of protection that was built in to, to reassure people. Now, not every, everyone clearly was reassured, uh, but uh, I, I think that was really because people didn't uh, sufficiently understand the issues. Uh, for example, many of the people that I spoke to had never actually read the bill. Uh, the people who were concerned about the mainland's criminal justice system were wholly unfamiliar uh, with how it actually operated and the improvements that have occurred over the last 20 or 20, 25 years. Uh, and they were also wholly unaware of the fact that uh, uh, China, mainland China, has signed uh, 55 uh, extradition agreements with other places. Uh, and amongst that, that number are, are nine European Union countries. Indeed, in very recent times, France, uh, Bulgaria, Italy uh, have all sent people back to mainland China for trial pursuant to extradition agreements. Uh, and just last month, Spain did exactly the same thing. It sent 94 Taiwanese fraud suspects back to mainland China uh, for trial, they being part of a, of a larger group of 214 who had been sent back uh, to uh, China by Spain. Now, all those European countries are signed up to every human rights treaty going, and they certainly wouldn't be sending people back if they had concerns that the people who were being sent back wouldn't be appropriately treated. Uh, and, of course, uh, people didn't understand that. Uh, and, of course, if the European countries feel it's uh, safe to return people for trial to mainland China, then it, 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 it's obviously uh, entirely safe for, for Hong Kong to be doing uh, exactly the same thing. What do you think of those protesters who stormed into the Legislative Council on July 1st? What was behind that? Well, it was a great, obviously a huge pity that that happened because most of the protests had been peaceful. But it's clear that there is a violent wing uh, to the protesters uh, and they're prepared to use extreme violence in order to uh, achieve their ends. Uh, as you know, they tried to batter their way uh, into the Legislative Council on the 12th of June. Uh, they were unsuccessful in doing that, so they treated July the 1st uh, as unfinished uh, business. Uh, it's clear that they were uh, highly organized, highly trained, highly resourced, uh, and you could see uh, clear chains of command uh, and indeed of supply. So this was a highly organized attack on, on our parliament, uh, and obviously it's uh, extremely reprehensible. Uh, no other uh, civilized country would allow its parliament to be invaded in that way, uh, and uh, obviously there must be consequences uh, for those who are involved in doing it, because it is a direct attack not only on the rule of law, but also on our very way of life. What do you think of the Hong Kong police handling the situation? The Hong Kong police have done an incredibly difficult job. They've been very restrained in the way they've responded to this. They've shown far more restraint than uh, any other Western country, uh, or indeed East <laughs> country anywhere in the world, uh, would, would, would have shown uh, in these type of circumstances. Uh, particularly on, on June the 12th, the police uh, laid their li lives on the line for us all in what were clearly terrifying circumstances. They were uh, attacked by people carrying sharpened spears, carrying bricks, carrying improvised weapons, uh, and uh, they stood their ground, uh, and eventually they took uh, steps to restore law and order. Uh, they did a marvellous job, in my view, uh, and we all owe them a great debt of, of gratitude. Do you see a light at the end of the tunnel? Uh, well, there's always uh, light at the end of the tunnel. It's obviously a difficult time that we're going through, but I'm sure that the government will hold its nerve uh, it will allow things to settle down. It will then have to consider how perhaps it can do things better in future, uh, how it can have uh, more uh, consultation. Uh, but it also must ensure that our core values are fully upheld. And by that, I mean the rule of law, uh, our independent uh, prosecution service, uh, and the notion that those who show contempt 
for our way of life uh, should uh, have to face the consequences.